I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. My name is Leanne Kramer. I'm a patient and patient advocate. We are going to talk today about HER2 low um, and the drug in HER2 and how that applies to brain metastasis. We are so very fortunate to have um, an expert in the field um, of not only breast cancer, but HER2 and HER2 low, Dr. Paolo Tarantino. He's a leading researcher in the field of breast cancer with over 50 papers published on this topic. He's currently pursuing an advanced research, research fellowship at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. He's also concomitantly pursuing a PhD in clinical research at the University of Milan. His research focuses on the study of HER2 oncoprotein, the emerging HER2 low subgroup of breast tumors, and the development of novel antibody drug conjugates to treat every subtype of breast cancer. Um, so welcome, Dr. Tarantino. Thank you very much for this invitation. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to join you and to discuss this important topic that is how we are expanding the benefit of certain drugs to a much wider population of patients. And I think there's going to be a lot of great discussions today. Thank you, Leanne, for this presentation and invitation. Oh, yeah, we're so lucky to have you and so glad that you were able to do this. Um, so while we're going to talk about um, what HER2 low is and the use of the antibody drug conjugate, which is known by TDXD, um, trastuzumab, I jump over the word, trastuzumab, deroxitucant, and in her too, I can't even like spit it all out. Yeah, I feel TDXD <laughs> works much better. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> after I've just stumbled over all that. Um, so we'll just use TDXD for future reference. Um, um, and then, um, but well, let's take a step back and, and talk a little bit just about how breast cancer has been historically categorized, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, I would like to share a few slides that I feel that could help. And in general, sorry, let me see if I can share them. Okay. So in general, what has happened in breast oncology in, in, the, in the 90s, in the 1990s, is something huge because we discovered that there was a subpopulation of breast cancers that had an overexpression of a certain protein that today we call HER2. And this protein, once it's overexpressed based on an amplification of a gene that is in the cell, leads to a much faster replication of the tumors, makes these tumors more aggressive. And, and so when we recognize this, we started to develop ways to target this protein called HER2. And we started to call these tumors HER2 positive. And, and this is why we really started to divide breast cancers in those that are HER2 positive. And so that have this overexpression of the protein HER2. And these are about 15 to 20% of all the breast tumors. And the other major part of tumors, they said we called for a long time, for more than 20 years, HER2 negative, just because they don't have such an overexpression of the protein or an amplification of the gene that leads to this overexpression. And for this HER2 positive subset of breast tumors, we developed so many anterior to drugs that work very well. The first one was called trastuzumab, but then we had pertuzumab, lapatinib, and many others, now eight anterior to drugs that are approved and transformed HER2 positive breast cancer from one of the most aggressive subsets of breast tumors to one of the most curable ones. And so actually once finding that a tumor was HER2 positive was bad news, and actually today is not bad news anymore because we have all of these drugs. The thing is that, as I said, this only works for about 15 to 20% of breast cancers, whereas the other 80% was called HER2 negative because we didn't have this very high expression of HER2. And even if we didn't have this very high expression, we knew that even among the HER2 negative tumors, we did have some HER2. And so, for the test that we use today to identify if a tumor is HER2 positive or HER2 negative, 
we use a, um, a test that is called immunohistochemistry, or in three letters, IHC. And this test has several scores. You can have a score of zero, one plus, two plus, three plus. So from zero to three. And if the score is three, it means that it's very high and the tumor is HER2 positive. If the score is two, you need to check for the amplification. And so if the score is two and there is the amplification, once again, the tumor is HER2 positive. But in any other score, so zero, one plus or two plus non-amplified, this has always been considered HER2 negative. And just very recently, we started to see this in a different way because we recognize that the tumors that still have some expression, so the one plus and two plus non-amplified actually could derive some benefit from anterior two drugs. And in particular, this type of drugs that Leanne mentioned, antibody drug conjugates. 